a couple of verses from God's Word this morning. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. See that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Help us, Lord, to understand the importance of doing things in a timely manner. Lord, help us to know that we are to be workers for you and to not waste our time on things that are not important. Bless us this day and keep us safe. Forgive us many of our sins this day. In Christ's name I ask these saying, Amen and Amen. <clears throat> Time management, God's way. Here is a fact, and this is a fact. Godliness is a result of a disciplined spiritual life. Godliness. But at the heart of a disciplined spiritual life is the disciplined use of your time each and every day. And you'll see why in just a moment. Because I'm telling you, brothers and sisters in Christ, you don't have much of it. You only have a lot in the mouth, and that's it. And how you use that time is very, very important to God's eyes. If you're going to be, and we say as Christians, to be a Christian is to be Christ-like. If we're going to be like Jesus, we need to learn to use our time in a pleasing way to God. I want you to ask this question, and this is, this is the sticking point where everybody's going to get mad at me this morning, but just get mad, okay? Do you think it pleases God that you never come to Sunday school on Sunday morning? Do you think that pleases Him? Do you believe that it pleases God when I don't go to church on Sunday night or I don't go on Wednesday nights, do you think that that pleases him? The Apostle Paul is trying to tell us we are to be redeeming the time because the days are evil. Things are drawing people away from God's house in droves today. We have so many things that keep people from coming to church. I fuss and fuss and fuss. My grandson is playing what they call summer baseball. And I love watching him play. But guess when the tournament is? The tournament's today. I said I could not believe that they could not do it on Saturday. They have to do it on Sunday. Innocent? Yes, that's an innocent thing. There is no violence. There is no uh, anything harmful or bad about playing baseball, but except that it takes away from God's time. Do you think that's pleasing to God this morning? Do you? Seeing then that we walk circumspectly, not as fools. Message Bible, if you have one of them at home or wherever you have, maybe you have it with you, says it like this. So watch your step Use your noggin, use your head, make the most of every chance you get because these are desperate times. We blame everything on COVID, or I, I blame a lot of things. And, and truthfully, COVID changed the, the way people look in, in America today. It changed a lot of things. But to me, COVID came from the devil. The devil put that out there to keep us out of God's house. And look what it has done. Look, just look around you. Look what God or Satan has done to our church. Paul is telling us here, in these verses, the first thing he's telling us is to use your time wisely. Is going to a ball game on Sunday wise? Not in God's eyes, is it? We find in Ephesians, in chapter or verse 15 there, there's a warning. And it's telling us to use this time, to use it wisely. But what's really interesting is, 
is the reason that it gave. So why should you use your time wisely? Verse 16 says, because the days are evil. The days are evil. Tell me not that there is more evil in this world right now than there's ever been. There is evils that have never even been thought of years ago. Things that they do today had not even been thought of. Can you imagine when the writers of our Constitution in America thought of that they needed to put in a clause that says men can marry men and women can marry women? Do you think these godly men sat down and even thought about anything like that? Today, the, the, the proponents are those that are for gay marriages are saying, well, it's not written out in the Constitution. Well, no, because they didn't even think that anybody would do anything like that. Of course they didn't address it. Why should they? That's not natural. Human beings do not do that. Even animals don't do that. Amen? Right. <clears throat> How many of you have ever said this? Boy, I'll be glad when this day is over. Huh? Have you ever mentioned, have you ever said that? Yes. When things were going so bad? Yes. I mean, it's just one thing falls apart and then you just go from that one to another. And you're saying, I'm just glad this day is over. You know something? That is not per exactly what he's talking about when he talks about because the days are evil. There is evil. There's evil in this world. And you know something? There was evil when, when Paul wrote those words. And it ain't got no better. To use my 10 mile English, it ain't got no better. Amen? You see, life is full of tests and trials, isn't it? There is a spiritual battle going on every day. Satan is out after the souls of every person that he can get. And if you've surrendered your soul to Jesus Christ this morning, he's out after you. He's trying to steal your testimony this morning. And how's he doing it? Look around you. Nobody. They're not in church. He's stealing your testimony. Your testimony is how well you try to follow what Jesus Christ has told you to do. And if you don't go to church, then what has he told you? That's Satan stealing your testimony. We got out of the habit when the COVID come again. We got out of the habit of going to Sunday school. We got out of the habit of going to church. Oh, we use the excuse, oh, I'm not getting that disease, you know. I'm going to get in there close to everybody. You know, they didn't close Walmart, I don't believe during COVID, did they? No. Did they ever close it? No. I don't think they did. I think it had a, a time when old people could come in real early in the morning. No one I still like to go early in the morning because we don't like to fight the crowd, amen? I know one thing, I was working at that time when it hit. They didn't close us down. But yet they said the churches couldn't meet because that would be a time when you could transmit the disease. Let me tell you this. There's all kinds of stuff in this world that will draw you away from God's house. From being godly in, God, in God's eyes. Things that will rob you of the good use of your time. You know, there's we got, we got now all these cell phones. You know, these cell, I, you know something? I, I, I truthfully, and I've said this statement many times, I wish in, in, that I could just snap my fingers and all cell phones would be gone. Every one of them. There wouldn't be one in America. You know something? We might learn how to talk to each other again. You know that? We might. We might want to communicate with people. But all of these things, all these inventions, they have no spiritual value to them. 
Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2, set your affection on things above, not on things of this earth. Do you have the latest iPhone? Hmm? Or do you have the latest Android? You know, that's what people are they are seeking, though. If I can just get that new device. They don't think about God or anything about God. It's all about what I can get and how I can live my life here and, and be enjoyable. How I'm going to enjoy this life. I can tell you this. I can enjoy it a lot better if they knew where their soul was going. I think Dora read this verse the other night and, and on Wednesday night when we were having our Bible study. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Think about those things. How can I help my fellow man? By sitting in my house watching that TV. Amen. You know, things of, a lot of the things that we talk about, they're not evil. They're not evil of themselves. Playing ball is not evil. Watching TV is not evil. But when it takes you away from the things of God, then it becomes evil. It becomes a sin. We need to redeem the time. We need to take control of our thoughts and our preoccupations. The Apostle Paul says, use your time wisely. Second point we want to make about using time God's way. You need to use your time making preparation for eternity. Right now is the time that you're making preparations for heaven. Did you realize that? When you stand in before Jesus Christ, what's going to be your answer to the fact that I just didn't want to get up on Sunday morning and go to Sunday school? What, what's going to be your excuse? What are you going to tell them? Or I, I didn't want to go on Sunday night. I, I wanted to take a nap and I didn't feel like getting up and going back to church. What are you going to tell him? You've got to give an account for what you're doing right now. Does it not worry you? Does it not worry what, what God is going to say to you? <clears throat> right now, what you do has an impact on what your life will be like in heaven. I know every one of us here know that life can change and be changed just like that. You can go right now, you can get a telephone call. And somebody say, well, so-and-so was in an accident and they were killed right now. Life changes in an instant, doesn't it? Right now. I mean, we don't have to worry about it later on. It, we were talking about, or I know somebody read that about July the 4th is Independence Day. That's the day our, our country declared its independence from from England. Well, I can tell you this. In, the, in April of 1970, I declared my independence. I declared my independence from Satan. I gave my life to Jesus. Amen? And he set me free. And I had freedom. Amen? Something I'd never had in all my life. I had freedom. Right now, what is more precious to you right now than this, this moment right now? Is there anything more precious? Think about it. You're alive. Amen? That's more precious than anything else. Paul said in Corinthians 6, 2, For, for he said, I have heard thee in time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Right now, you're preparing for eternity. And if you're not sure where you're going to be, be at when you leave this world, 
you need to fix it right now, today, before, before another day passes, because you are not guaranteed another day. You see, I, I accepted Christ back in 1970. That's been a long time. That's 50, 50 some years. See, I had a whole lot of time. Man, just think, I could have wasted a whole lot of time. I could have, couldn't I? And still got saved today and still got to heaven. Do you know something? But I sure missed out on those chances to serve God. You see, I've been, I've been Sunday school teachers. I've been a deacon. I've been a pastor. I've been, I've, I've been all of the things that you can do for the Lord in the church. I would have missed all that, wouldn't I? Wouldn't I? I mean, if I'd have lived my life for the devil all this time to come in this morning and got down on my knees and got saved, sure, I'm going to heaven. But look at all that time I have wasted. And that's what the Apostle Paul is talking about. You're wasting your life. Prepare for eternity right now. Think about this, too. Your time is very limited. You ain't got for so many years. You know that. It, it, it don't matter. <laughs> You've heard of the law of supply, supply and demand, right? When something is in short supply, the demand is high. And the price goes up. <coughs> the more scarce something is, the more valuable it is. So you only got so many days. It's a scarcity. It's very valuable. Don't waste your time. Your time is valuable. Just think of gold and diamonds were, were, were like the rocks out here in the, the, in the parking lot. They wouldn't be worth anything, would they? They'd be valuable. But they're so rare. That's what makes them valuable. Your time is so short. That's what makes it so valuable. Don't waste it. James 4.14 Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It's even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanishes away. Life in this world will come to an end. Okay? It's basically, basically this. Folks, I'm going to tell you, I'm fixing to die. Okay? It, it's, it's a given fact. What did they say? That life is a sexually transmitted disease with 100% mortality. Amen? Everybody dies, right? We need to be prepared for that day when that happens. The book of Hebrews tells us this, if you want to be prepared. It says, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this a judgment. So remember this. When I go to my next point here, your time is passing by. It's, it, it's, it's just passing by. Does anybody remember Jim Croce and his song, Time in a Bottle? Remember that song? Was, it, he released that in 1972. It's, it, was, it made the number one chart. And he was talking about if he could just put time in a bottle and then get it out anytime he needed it. Well, it proved that he couldn't do that. Because one year after he released the song, he died. He died in a plane crash. You can't, you can't bottle time. You can't hold, you can't put it in some place over here and save it and then go get it later. You can't do that. What's the old expression? Time marches on. It, it goes forward all the time. You can try to save time in a bottle, but it won't work. There's no fountain of view. Hmm. Wouldn't you like that, though? If you could put time in a bottle, and then when you get up to, to say, like my age, and you pull it out and go back 20, 30 years and start over again, wouldn't that be great? Huh? I think about that sometimes, you know, but, but you can't do it because time marches forward. It never goes back. It marches forward. You know, how many of you have seen this picture? Of, of, well, I've seen them on, on TV where they do this makeup on women's faces, you know, and to, 
the before and after thing, you know? Sure enough, they'd take a, a, an old woman and, and then they'd spray that stuff on there and stretch her skin out and do all this. Make her look younger. Is she any younger? Huh? No, she's not. You cannot go backwards in time. You only go forward. Let me tell you this. They, they, they push this diet and exercise all the time. And, and truthfully, I, I'm kind of for it. I just don't do it. <laughs> Amen? I, I really do think that it, I believe it's beneficial. I really do. But getting myself to do it is a different story. Amen? I'll be honest. I think I need to lose some weight. And I've been thinking that for the last 28 years. But you know how it is. And I'm always going to do it tomorrow. I'm always going to start that diet tomorrow. Okay? I, I, I just know what I mean to. I've been doing that 28 years now. Okay? I want you to understand, everybody's going to die. Remember the name Jack LaLanne? He was credited as being the healthiest man in the world. The healthiest man in the world. At 80 years old, he was out here pumping iron. I mean, he, he, he really was. But the headlines read, the healthiest man in the world died January 23rd, 2011. You're going to die, people. Amen. So what does all this mean? It means your time is passing away. By the time I say moment, that moment is gone. And you can't get it back. Even King David in the Old Testament knew that time was, was marching on. In 1 Kings 2, 1 and 2, he said, Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, and he changed he charged Solomon, his son, saying, I go the way of all earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. You cannot tie an anchor time. If I could just do something to slow it down. You know, if I didn't age hardly as quick. But you can't do it. You can't slow time down. It marches on at the same speed. If you could capture it and put it in a bottle. If you could just hold on to it and make it last longer. But it can't. Fifth point, your time is uncertain. <laughs> wow. If I handed you a calendar this morning and told you, scroll through this and pick out the day you're going to die, could you do that? Hmm? Couldn't, could you? We don't know when that day is. We don't know when that time is. We don't know when that hour, that moment, that second, that it's going to happen. We don't know. God knows, but we don't. How many of you have been around a doctor and when they diagnosed somebody, told them, well, you got six months to live. And then come to find out they lived 15 years or 20 years or lived a long life after that. It happens. It truly does. But then we've done funerals for people that you thought were healthy. There wasn't anything wrong with them. And just like that. They went into eternity. Proverbs 27, 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. There's a thousand people, there's thousands of people who died this very day that yesterday they didn't know they were going to die. Think about that. I wonder if they knew they were going to die today, would they have lived their life differently yesterday? Wow. We make plans and so we're going to live forever, don't we? I thought at one, at one time I really thought maybe I was going to live forever. You know that? When you're younger, you don't think about dying. You think you're going to live forever. <coughs> and then brings point six here. Your time is easily lost. Your time is so, so precious, but yet we waste it so much. We waste so much of it. 
doing useless things. There's many things in the world that you can lose and find it back. My daughter lost her keys the other day, but she found them. Amen. I lost my cell phone one day, but you know what? I found it. But that's one thing. You can lose time and you can't get it back. You can't find it again. It's gone. Remember the old uh, soap opera? Like sands through an hourglass, so are the days of our life. Is that not true? It just keeps running through, don't it? It doesn't stop. It just keeps running through. You can't say, hold it, hold it. I don't want to go there. Time comes only to be gone in an instant. Jesus said in John chapter 9, verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night come when no man can work. Jesus realized that his time was limited. The time for godly living people is today. Today is the day. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to follow Jesus Christ. So whatever you've been doing that, that's putting Jesus Christ in the closet, whatever it is, you need to stop doing that and get back on board with living a Christian life. Point number seven, and I think I'm going to wind up here. Only God can give you time upon time. Only God can give you time. I can't give you extra time. God can. The time that God can give us is unlimited. And in fact, we're going to go to a place where it's called eternity. Do you ever sit back and just think about how long is eternity? I want to tell you this morning, it's a long, long time. <laughs> Amen. It's a long, long time. Jesus said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Everlast that means that it don't ever end. It, once it starts, it don't end. Mine happened back in April, 1970. My eternal life began right then. It's never going to end. You need to underline that word, everlasting, in that verse. You know, we really have no concept of what everlasting really is. But I, I run across this illustration, and I thought it was, it's kind of kind of a silly illustration in a way, but it, it really maps it out the way that it, you can understand it. It says, suppose that a sparrow flew over to the Atlantic Ocean, filled its beak up with water, flew all the way across the United States to the Pacific Ocean, and dropped that beak full of water into the Pacific Ocean. He sat and waited a thousand years, went back and got another, filled his mouth full of it, flew back again, and dropped it in the Pacific Ocean. And then he spent a thousand years, and then he went back, and he kept doing that until he had all the water in the Atlantic over in the Pacific. Now think about that. Each time he rested a thousand years. Each time he made that thousand years, not one day in eternity would have passed. Not one day. So how long, how long a person who has accepted the gift of everlasting life can hope to spend with our Savior in eternity. So you say, well, you're talking about what I do here and what I've done, and I'm going to have to give an account for it. You think it's going to be 
a one day thing? Huh? You think it, you think it, how many times you're going to have to live your life over again before Jesus Christ and point out every time when you had a time to serve him that God told you to serve him, to do this. Christ was wanting you to do this and you didn't do it. How many times? How many times you're going to have to live that in front of Christ? He's going to see it. He's going to question. He's going to want to know. And yet we can sit here and say, well, it's not really important whether I do that or whether I don't do that. It's not important if I go to Sunday school. It's not important if I go to church Sunday night. I'm telling you, it's important. And one day, one day you're going to give an account. Now, I know there's times you can't come to church. Don't get me wrong. Don't throw things at me. But I'm telling you this. This idea that, well, I don't know. I, just, I waste a whole hour of my day if I got up one Sunday school. People, God is going to judge you one day. He's going to judge you for every act that you do. I want to say this before I close. Love you, church. Love each and every one of you, okay? And I understand life probably more than, than a lot of people here. And I understand what, what happens in life. And I want you to understand you're no worse than anybody else. Okay, you're no worse than I am. For I don't serve God every day, all the time, like I should. I know I don't. But I know this. I love the Lord, and I'm going to try to serve him as much as I can. Okay? Everybody stand if you will. And he has said this. No matter how old you get, you cannot quit serving God. You cannot quit serving Him. We like to think, well, I'm old and He'll forgive me. No, He won't. Amen? There's always a way to serve God. No matter how old you get. God has promised us some things. He's promised us everlasting life if we will accept Christ. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to that time. Oh, I'll have to make my excuses, Lord, why I didn't do this. Why I should have done that. I'll have to. I know I will. But I'm going to try to minimize as much of that as 